raising hens now for about three years, we get just the laying hens so we don't have meat birds. I like to get the hens that lay the little green and blue eggs. And for my family, we need about a dozen to a dozen and a half eggs a week. And so I like to change out my flock of three to four hens every year. So in the fall, I buy some more chicks. I like to buy the chicks in the fall because it's my understanding that a lot of times hens don't lay many eggs in the winter anyway. So I buy my chicks in the fall and then they'll start laying usually that following February or March. So um, now as you can see here, I put the, together this little chart because I didn't go into a lot of detail on the chicks in my first chicken video. I'll make sure to leave a link to that video if you missed it. This chart will show you that I like to have a period here from usually uh, September through February where I'm not getting eggs and then they'll start to lay small eggs and those eggs will gradually get bigger and um, then this shows you here how many dozen I get per month. I'll get another flock of chickens in that fall and then the following year I have an overlap here so I'm getting a lot of eggs per week as you see here and that's when I start to give them away to friends and family and then as that flock reaches around 18 months old then I will sell them before I get into the winter season usually they'll slow down their laying anyway and I'll keep the second flock and I just continue this rotation so that way I'm ensured we have a continual supply of eggs for my family we need about a dozen to a dozen and a half each week and so this is just how I prefer to have backyard chickens so now I'd like to share with you how I go about ordering my chicks I had one breed of chicken from my first flock and she was called a um, prairie bluebell egger she was an egg laying machine let me tell you she just laid so many eggs she's a cross between a leghorn which are supposed to be your best layers and i think an aracana if i remember correctly anyway that breed is a hybrid and um i decided since those were available at the hatchery that would be what i would order now um, I went to order them and I like to get just the females. They cost a little bit more, but I order a lot at one time so I get a little bit of a discount. And with this particular hatchery, I have to make sure to uncheck one of the boxes here because they'll send me a rooster <laughs> and I don't have roosters. So I just wanna have egg laying hens. So I ordered my chicks and they were due to arrive in just a couple of weeks. So I got busy setting up the brooder. I just took an old tote that I had. It was falling apart and I drilled a couple of holes on the side for a perch. And then inside this little tote, I installed a parakeet cup, a cage cup. I think I got it at the pet store. I just took some old supplies I had laying around. And then I took this little waterer, which is also for like um, hamsters and that kind of thing. Put my little branch in here and that's the perch for the chickens. And then I took that small tote and put it inside my pet playpen that's collapsible. I like to use this for the brooder. And I put my heat lamp in there along with a little wire shelf I had. I'm just gathering up things from the garage and so that way they could not fly out of there. And um, now the heat lamp, um, I already had it and I turned it on. I want to make sure everything's ready to go when I get my chicks and the light bulb was not working so fortunately I did have some more in storage so I pulled out another light bulb it's not something you want to do when your chicks are there and then they don't have heat you know they need that heat right away so I lowered my light stand real low and everything was working I got it nice and warm it was ready to go and then I got a call from the post office they told me my chicks are ready to pick up so I had my brooder all nice and warmed up and it was time to get them. Okay, you're all set. All right, thank you. You're welcome. You have a good one. You too.
Now I like to order 15 chicks because I get a little bit of a discount when I order a larger quantity. And this also allows me the opportunity to pick out the three or four that I want to keep. And I like for all of my chicks to look different. And so I will be more familiar with which ones are laying what eggs. Um, I removed them all very gently and put them in the brooder. There was one in here that was trampled and so it did not make it. Now the hatchery will say if one of your chicks die to let them know and they'll give you a refund. So that was unfortunate and very sad, but um, I guess those kind of things happen sometimes. So um, I contacted the hatchery and they gave me a refund on the one that was trampled. I gave them their new home. Now I will usually stay with the chicks for 30 minutes to an hour to make sure they all get water and they know where their food is. So the first thing I did was try to introduce them to the little waterer. I wanted to train this flock to drink from something other than a dish because my other chickens, they never um, drank from the little waterers. I know that their water will stay cleaner if I can get them drinking out of something like this, but they're just a little bit too young for that at this point. So what I did was just get a very small dish and put some shallow water in there to train them to drink from the water. I wet my fingers a little bit and touched their beak to the water and pretty soon once you show one how to do it then they'll all follow that one. That's the thing about chickens. You don't have to show each one how to do something. They always follow a leader. So they are having a good time. When they learned what the water was they all just started drinking. They were all so thirsty. So I made sure to keep my eye on them so they wouldn't get trampled and maybe drown in the water. And then it was time to show them the crumbles. So I think technically this is called a starter crumble. And I also add a little bit of chick grit to that, which I, I think I get that on Amazon. A lot of my supplies I'll get them at Tractor Supply. But um, I do have a storefront on Amazon. So if you see some of these things that I'm using and you're wondering where to get them, you can go to the link below this video and go to my storefront. Just click on chicken care and that'll show you some of the things that I'm using here. Now I really like the play pens. Mine's really big and um, I know they usually come in three different sizes. I think mine's about three feet wide. Now I felt pretty good about um, they were eating and they found their water. I moved the dish when I wasn't there because um, they're still so tiny. And then some of them just looked like they weren't feeling too good. So they were just laying right there. They were just sleepy and tired from, I guess, all of the exertion from traveling and then getting something to eat. So I was kind of worried at first, but they all recovered just fine. Um, They're just little at that point and um, still just really cute. All of them were very healthy and did great. Now one thing about chickens is they are very smelly. I keep these in my garage. Uh, so I made sure to keep cleaning out the brooder at least every few days. And before long, they started to get on their little perch and you started acting a lot more like chickens. So you want to see that. That's nice and healthy. And then they started drinking from the waterer. So I also really like that. I still would offer them regular water from a dish, but I did like to see them using the little waterer. So I placed the brooder in the garage where the sunlight would hit it so they were at least getting some natural sunlight. So I'm raising the light a little bit every few days as their feathers are starting to fill in. So at this point here, it's about 11 days after I got them, they are uh, growing pretty good 
and they're starting to take up a lot more of this brooder space. So I felt comfortable in moving them out into the larger area. So I just took that tote, cleaned it up a little bit, cut a hole in the side. And what I'm going to do now is turn it upside down so it'll be kind of a little coop for them. And I moved the water bottle to the outside and just put it in one of the little holes where I had the cage cup. So that way um, they can start to feel like they've got you know, a little run along with a coop. So they can start to really act like chickens. They're getting a lot bigger. It's unbelievable how big they get so fast. And so um, I just set this up so it'd be like a little coop for them. And then they had the run. And then at this point, I'm really moving that light up a lot more. And they're staying plenty warm. And they like using their little coop that makes them feel safe when they can run and hide in something like that. In the garage, the concrete floor is pretty cold. So what I like to do is take my seed warming mat that I use for my plants, and I just put that right up underneath the brooder, and that's where they love to sleep because it's nice and warm, and that's, they all just kind of pile on each other and stay very nice and warm. And... Um, now, in my county, I can sell chicks, but they have to be three weeks old. So that's why I was waiting for three weeks to reduce the flock to the three or four that I wanted to keep. So I sold those on Craigslist. There's always a high demand for chicks and even full-grown chickens. So I have no problem usually selling the chicks. And we decided actually just to keep six because um, I had skipped my last year's rotation of getting new chicks because I had a knee injury and we had like this flood. We had a lot of things going on in the fall of last year. So I totally missed getting more chicks last year. So we are going to have six hens this year. But at any rate, um, they are getting bigger at this point, as you can see here. And I'm having to make sure I clean out that brooder because it gets so smelly. You'd be surprised at how much the odor will go through your whole house, even if they're in your garage. <laughs> so I'm making sure to keep it lined with some paper bags. If I had cardboard, that'd be great too. Keep the new pine shavings in there. And I'm ready to get them out. And when they're about eight weeks old, they are going out into one of the tractors. I will gradually start moving them in and out, probably when they're six to seven weeks old. Uh, but by the time they're eight weeks old, they should be fine and feathered out and ready for that tractor. So there you go. That's how I set up my chicks. That's how I do my rotation. If you have any questions, please leave them down below the video. And I will be more than happy to try to help you out if you're new to this. Um, uh, we have really had a good time, and it's always a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching, and y'all have a beautiful day.